Rodrigo Hernandez, and you're watching Spirit Church here on the Encounter TV Network. I'm continuing now my series on the symbols of the Holy Spirit by talking about how the Holy Spirit seals our salvation. The Holy Spirit is the seal of the Father upon our lives. And if you've struggled with doubting your salvation, if you've struggled with doubting the fact that you belong to God, then I know that this truth will liberate you. But first, Stephen Moctezuma is here with me. He's going to lead you in some very anointed worship. And then we're getting right into this message. Here is Stephen Moctezuma. One thing I desire, only this I see. Oh, just to dwell, dwell, dwell here forever. This will be my posture, laying at your feet. Oh, just to dwell. Father, closest friend. 
father, closest friend, most beautiful, most beautiful, dearest father, closest friend, most beautiful, most beautiful. Perhaps one of the greatest works that the Holy Spirit does in our lives is assure us of our salvation. The scripture says in Romans chapter 8, verse number 15, So you have not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Instead, you received God's spirit when he adopted you as his own children. Now we call him Abba Father. Verse 16, for his spirit joins with our spirit to affirm that we are God's children. The Holy Spirit is the one who affirms the saving work of God in your life. The Holy Spirit is the one who assures you that you belong to the Father. The Holy Spirit is the one who gives you confidence that Jesus is your Savior, your Lord, your King, and your friend. The Holy Spirit speaks against the voices of doubt. The Holy Spirit speaks against the voices of fear, those lies that would try to deceive you and cause you to believe that God has rejected you, that you're an outcast, or that God has run out of patience for you. I can't tell you how many people come up to me asking me, if God has rejected them. I can't tell you how many people have messaged me and texted me and called me, fearful and wondering whether or not they are saved. This is an important work of the Spirit because many believers struggle with believing that they, in fact, belong to God. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22 says this, And He has identified us as His own, by placing the Holy Spirit in our hearts as the first installment that guarantees everything He has promised us. So the Holy Spirit is God's deposit upon your life that assures you that you in fact belong to Him and that when you die, you will go to be in the presence of God. Now, in Jewish wedding culture, the father of the groom would usually be the one who picked the bride for his son. After the father of the groom found whom he believed to be the choice bride, he would approach the bride and her family. There would be a written marriage agreement made. After the written agreement was finished, it was customary for the father of the groom to give a gift to the father of the bride. That gift acted as a deposit for the bride. It was a promissory note, a guarantee of the groom's intentions to marry. Once that deposit was made, the intent to marry would become official. The Jewish wedding traditions, like many of the Jewish traditions, mirror the spiritual realm. Just as the father of the groom selects the bride, so God the Father has chosen to give the church to his son. And just as the father of the groom leaves a gift representing a promise, so God fills you with his Holy Spirit, his divine promise. The Holy Spirit is that guarantee that he's coming back for you. That was the gift that the father of the groom would give to guarantee that in fact there was an intention to marry, that he was going to make good on that marriage contract. Now, Christ has ascended into heaven and he's placed upon us, within us, a seal. That seal is the Holy Spirit, that stamp of God's approval, that mark upon our lives that we, in fact, belong to Him. The Holy Spirit is God's seal in you, guaranteeing that you will eventually receive it all. Watch this now. This is powerful. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and we're going to begin reading at verse number 3. For we will put on heavenly bodies. We will not be spirits without bodies. 
While we live in these earthly bodies, we groan and sigh, but it's not that we want to die and get rid of these bodies that clothe us. Rather, we want to put on our new bodies so that these dying bodies will be swallowed up by life. God himself has prepared us for this. And as a guarantee, he has given us his Holy Spirit. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 13 and 14 say this, In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom also, after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest, or that gift, or that deposit of our inheritance. That's the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of His glory. In other words, the Holy Spirit in you is more than just the mark of God upon your life guaranteeing your salvation. The Holy Spirit in you is more than just the guarantee upon your life that tells you and assures you that you belong to God. But in fact, the Holy Spirit within you is God's guarantee that everything He promised in His Word will be yours. Your new heavenly body, God promised that to you. And though we exist in these mortal bodies, though we sigh and we groan, though we experience pain, though we experience sickness and fatigue and hunger, though we experience all of the results of the fall of man in our bodies, one day we are guaranteed new heavenly bodies, a new way of existing, a new way of life. And all that was promised in the Word, including those new heavenly bodies, are guaranteed to us, and that guarantee is marked by the Holy Spirit. So not only does the Holy Spirit give you assurance of your salvation, not only does the Holy Spirit give you assurance that you belong to God, but the Holy Spirit gives you assurance that eternity is yours, that every promise of the Father will be fulfilled. Now this guarantee we receive, this seal, is final. It's that mark of God upon your life. You don't need to live another minute fearful, and wondering whether or not God has accepted you. If you've put your faith in Jesus, if you have put your faith in the finished work of the cross, if you by faith have submitted your life into the hands of the Savior and you are trusting Him for your salvation, then you are saved. And the Holy Spirit is the deposit that guarantees you that assurance. You don't have to go on questioning. And this is what many believers do. We question after every mistake, has God abandoned me now? Have I gone too far? Have I crossed the line? Is it no more that, that God will forgive me? Is it no more that God will offer grace? But in fact, you're sealed. I trust not in my ability to be saved. Rather, I trust in the Holy Spirit's ability to save me. Now, for those of you who struggle with whether or not you belong to God, with whether or not you are saved, I say this, I want you to imagine that before you stands a door, and that door leads to a long hallway that st stretches for several feet. And on the other side of that hallway is another door. So there's a door before you, a long hallway, and then a door at the end of that hallway. Now, that first door that you walk through is justification. Justification is your right standing with God. Justification is when God declares you innocent because of the faith that you put in Christ's finished work. Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him as righteousness. So justification is that first door. Now, when I am saved, I open that door, and I step into the hallway, and I shut that door of justification behind me. The hallway, that long hallway that stretches all the way down. That is sanctification. Sanctification is the hallway because sanctification is a process. But here's the encouraging thing. At the other end of the hallway, at the other end, several feet away, is one final door. That door is glorification. Glorification is when all things are made new. When you have a glorified body, when the power of sin is completely broken over you, when you're dwelling in the heavenly places, that's glorification. When you finally reflect 
Christ's nature perfectly. You're complete, lacking nothing. That is glorification. Now, the good news is that no matter where you are in that hallway of sanctification, so long as the door of justification is shut behind you, you're sealed. You belong to Him. Now, in that hallway, maybe you take five steps forward and then one step backward. And sometimes maybe you take three steps backward and then two steps forward. But wherever you are in that hallway, so long as you are in the process of being sanctified, that means you've been sealed in that justification and the Holy Spirit has sealed you in that place. Now, God is not looking for you to be perfect. He is looking for you to be submitted to the process of being perfected. God is not looking for you to have no flaws, no mistakes, but God is looking for you to be surrendered and submitted to the process of being made right with Him or being made like Him. So the Holy Spirit is this guarantee. The Holy Spirit is the one who shuts that door behind you and puts you along that road and puts you on that path to final glorification. But while you walk through that hallway of sanctification, remember, because of the work of the Holy Spirit and because He has sealed you as the promise of God, you will reach that door of glorification. It's His promise. It's His guarantee. I want to pray with you now. I want to pray that the Holy Spirit would begin to strengthen your faith, would begin to firmly establish you in the saving work of Christ. We know that when we put our faith in Jesus, we're saved. Some might say, well, wait a minute. It's not that simple because you have to do good works to prove that you're saved. And I understand that we should walk in holiness, but good works are not the roots of the tree of salvation. Good works are the fruits of salvation. I don't do good works. I don't live holy to save myself. I live holy because Christ has already saved me. And the Holy Spirit guarantees that. And many of us battle back and forth. God, am I yours? God, do I belong to you? It's time to stop wavering. Let the Holy Spirit do His work now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I lift that one to you now who's struggling, Lord, who's wondering about their salvation constantly, who lives in that paranoid state, thinking that their every mistake is causing you to reject them. Holy Spirit, I pray you would come and do that work. Cause that one to cry, Abba, Father. Strengthen your work in them. Affirm, Lord, that they belong to you. Seal them. Mark them. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And I want you to repeat after me. Say this. Say, in the name of Jesus. I want you to actually say it. Say, in the name of Jesus. I come against, say it out loud, I come against every lie of the enemy. I, by faith, declare I belong to Jesus. And let the Holy Spirit do His work in you. Well, that is it for the lesson. I want to welcome now the new members of Spirit Church. There you are up on the screen. We love you and we are praying for you. I always say that because I always mean it. If you like information on how you can join the Spirit family, go to davidhernandezministries.com slash spiritchurch and join the over 12,000 who call Spirit Church their online home church. And now to your comments. These comments are from last week's teaching, Symbols of the Holy Spirit, the Dove. And in that teaching, I talked about how the Holy Spirit symbolizes new beginnings. So if you feel stuck, if you feel like you need a fresh start, if you feel like you need God to do something new in you, then I encourage you to go and watch that teaching. And while you're at it, especially if you're watching on YouTube, connect with us. Subscribe and click that notification bell so that you can receive notices when new content comes out. If you're watching on Facebook or anywhere else, be sure to connect with whatever social media platform you're watching us on. And if you'd like me to potentially read your comments on next week's edition of Spirit Church, then go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section right now. So here are the comments from Symbols of the Holy Spirit, the Dove. Eric Rodriguez writes, plus 100 EXP 
Stephen's worship team has just leveled up. I agree. And by the way, the songs you've been hearing recently are from Stephen's new worship album, where he's covered several different worship songs. If you'd like to give him a listen, just type in his name, Stephen Moctezuma, on your preferred music platform. Luthando Nindini writes, During my devotion, I was asking the Holy Spirit why it was specifically told that they should offer turtle doves for the sin in Leviticus. Now I know it's because of purity. By the way, they also write, Stephen Moctezuma is on another level now. May the Holy Spirit continue to use this channel for the glory of Jesus. And again, if you want to see what everyone is talking about, make sure you go and type in Stephen's name in your preferred music platform. Keth Thiwi Tembe writes, Thank you so much, God. This is what I needed to hear on this journey I've started this month. Thank you for confirming your word, God. Evangelist David, continue to bless us with more revelation and with God's teachings. And for Stephen, continue to bless us with spirit-filled worship. May God enlarge your territory without limitations. Thank you, Spirit Church. And the final comment I'm going to read comes from Combe Charles, who writes, David, whenever I feel like I cannot make it in my spiritual life, your teachings always get me back in the right path. Your God sent indeed. I started watching your teachings the time I failed. I wasn't on fire like I used to be, and then I watched your video titled, How to Restart and Keep the Fire of the Holy Spirit. That message helped me stay strong. I was thinking I couldn't get back on fire for God, but through your teachings, God is building me up once again. May God bless you. Well, that encourages me more than you know. This is why we do what we do. We want to see lives impacted for the glory of God. Now, I want to read a scripture to you. Don't go anywhere. It's important that you hear this too, especially if you've been blessed by this ministry. You need to hear this. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 21, Jesus says something quite powerful. He says, wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also be. Now here we're reading of people being touched by the Holy Spirit through His channel. By the way, Encounter TV is the Holy Spirit's channel because He runs it. People are being transformed by the content. Their lives are being changed. And we must have a heart for souls. We must have a heart for the work of the gospel. We must respond with gratitude to the saving work of God. He's done so much for us. He saved us, delivered us, healed us. He's helping us to grow and know Him more. He's blessed us with life. He's given us the blessings that we enjoy on a day-to-day -day basis. He's never held back from you. So don't hold back from Him. Have a heart for the gospel. Have a heart for the work of the ministry. Have a heart for what God has a heart for. Let His desires become your desires out of gratitude for Him saving you. So here's what I want you to do. I know maybe for some of you this might be a difficult season, financially speaking. But there's never a season where we shouldn't be sowing to the gospel. When you go through difficult times, the very last thing you should ever cut is your support of the gospel. So, I want to say this to my partners who are standing strong with us and who are so faithful and generous in their giving. I want to say thank you for your support. And to those of you who haven't partnered yet, now is the time. I want to challenge you to partner with our ministry for $10 a month. It's $2.50 a week on average. And when you partner with us, you're demonstrating that your heart is in this ministry. You're demonstrating that you're linking up with us to help win souls. You're showing the Lord, Lord, your desires are my desires. And we respond with gratitude to what God has done. So sign up today. Become a partner by going to davidhernandezministries.com slash partner. Become a partner for $10 or more a month. Now, right now, people who partner with our ministry for $10 or more a month get access to our monthly Zoom calls where I share a lot of ministry news that you're the first one to hear. And you get other things like a beautiful uh, Dove lapel pin. You get discounts on our ministry product. You get event seat reservations and other benefits. So if you partner with us, you can partner with us at the $10 a month level or more. You can do $30 or more or $100 or more a month. And there's different benefits at different levels. So go to davidhernandezministries.com slash partner to see how you can get involved. If you don't want to partner, and that's not something you really feel comfortable doing right now, or maybe you're a partner and you also want to give an additional gift, 
Those one-time gifts really help us out as well. So give a one-time gift by going to davidhernandezministries.com slash donate. So partner with us, davidhernandezministries.com slash partner, or donate a one-time gift, davidhernandezministries.com slash donate. But whatever you do, do it now and do it to demonstrate that your heart is in this with us. Help us fight for the soul of a generation through events and media as we demonstrate the power of the Holy Spirit. Well, that is it for this edition of Spirit Church here on the Encounter TV Network. Until next time, remember, nothing is impossible with God. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. Also, help us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.